Hello everybody, I'm Morgan Cracky, in case you didn't know, and this is my presentation on early American theater. You're gonna be listening to my voice, so strap in and get ready. I'm trying to make this as interesting as I can possibly make it. So here we go. Here's early American theater. Early American theater is often considered to be in the time frame of the 1830s to 1930s, although it's pretty flexible, and it was a large melting pot of different styles. This type of theater is classified by its content, characters, and the customs that were often practiced with each type. Although many of these themes throughout early American theater are controversial in today's society, for example blackface and misogyny, they were a stepping stone in developing modern theater today. The three main types of theater during this time were minstrel shows, vaudeville, and burlesque, and we'll be taking a closer look at each of these along with some of the famous faces of each type of theater. One of our first topics we'll be covering are minstrel shows. Minstrel shows began in the early 1830s and were based on the lives of plantation workers. White men would blacken their faces with burnt cork or grease paint and they'd dress in crazy costumes and they'd imitate and mock African American life with song and dance and comedy. Stock characters were a large part of minstrel shows, with three main character tropes appearing across the spectrum of these performances. Although minstrel shows are seen as controversial today because of their blackface, they were vital to developing many aspects of theater that still impact us today. Some of these aspects include character trope beginnings and stock characters, uh, spurring the development of popular music in the 19th century, and even the development of popular American songs such as Ozuzana and Camp Town Races. Al Jolson Al Jolson is a Russian-born singer, songwriter, and blackface comedian. He performed in both minstrel shows and vaudeville. He is considered by many to be the world's greatest entertainer. He became famous for his signature look, dark facial makeup and white gloves, to show contrast, along with his enthusiastic stage presence and his audience interaction. He did not use blackface to cause controversy or to offend, but simply used it for entertainment only. He also stated that he found a new and more confident side of himself after testing blackface in 1940. Some of his famous stage hits include Vera Violetta, The Whirl of Society, Sinbad, and Bombo. He has also starred in multiple movies such as Swanee River and The Singing Fool, and is most famous for starring in the first ever feature film with synchronized speech, The Jazz Singer. Part 2! Vaudeville! Vaudeville was a style of theater that consisted of basically any acts that could keep an audience's attention for more than three minutes. The acts of a vaudeville or a variety show consisted of, you name it, animal trainers, ventriloquists, dancers, comedians, singers, musicians. A dozen or more acts were often performed in a vaudeville show and the performances ranged from quirky to talented to truly crazy. Vaudeville left its biggest mark, however, in the TV and movie industry in multiple ways. Almost all actors at the beginning of the 20th century either went to the shows or performed in vaudeville. The physical comedy of the performance was often brought onto the big screens, and many silent film actors such as Burt Williams, Charlie Chaplin, and Buster Keaton were known vaudeville stars that became silent film actors. Vaudeville was truly a symbol of the cultural diversity of the 20th century in America. Last but not least, we will be covering the topic of burlesque. Burlesque was a style of theater that was based upon ancient Greek satirical plays and incorporated music, dance, and parody. Although it contained both men and women, it left behind a legacy as establishing a pattern of gender representation. This art form, burlesque, worked to change the role of women on the stage and screen forever. It was sometimes considered to be the lowest branch of theater during the 1900s because of its content, but that also meant that it was closer to the people. These shows normally revolved around situations and settings familiar to the lower class, and appealed mostly to the working class audience of males. This type of theater used any and every topic in society in their shows, often taking sharp aim at social conventions, specifically questioning ideas of the accepted proper place of women in society. Arguably, burlesque was one of the most thoroughly feminized forms of theater in America at that time, and was mostly driven and performed by women. Sarah Bernhardt 
Known as one of the finest actors of the 19th century, Bernhardt appeared on stage throughout her life and starred in some of the earliest films ever produced. Throughout her lifetime, she signed on with multiple production companies in France and soon found fame and fortune. Bernhardt found widespread fame as she grew in notoriety and traveled on tours to Russia, Europe, and even America. By 1896, Bernhardt had played over 112 parts in shows and films, with 38 parts being created by Bernhardt herself. She was one of the first ever actors to appear in motion pictures in the world, starring in her first film in 1900. She's known for her acting in roles in King Lear, Victor Hugo's Rui Bla, and Francis Coppée Le Passant, and some of their most notable performances in film would include her role in Hamlet, in which she did play Hamlet herself, and La Tosca. And now I've been talking at you for most of this thing, so let's just go over a summary of what I've talked about. We've talked about minstrel shows, which help to develop character tropes for theater in the future, along with developing the concept of quote-unquote popular music in America. In vaudeville, we talked about how it left a mark on the movie and TV industry, supplying actors and physical comedy for the big screen. In the vaudeville, it also helped in developing the idea of popular entertainment, such as theater, as a big business. Burlesque largely contributed to the shift in gender representation for women during the 1900s. Burlesque shows took aim at social conventions and brought to light issues in society. It is considered one of the most thoroughly feminized forms of theater in that time period. Also, we talked about actors such as Al Jolson and Sarah Bernhardt, who influenced theater and the performing arts and have helped shape the path for actors in society. In conclusion, early American theater has impacted a large part of modern theater today, and we would be in a much different place without it.